I was in uh, the drum group uh, up in front there and a uh, couple of times I glanced back and I was going like this is nice to see this many people coming out to support uh, the Git Yat Nation for sure. This is what we really needed and uh, to have that support and uh, to hear from the other nations that they're feeling the same way about uh, tankers on the coast and this sort of drove it home for us. We've agreed to let this process take place. We thought it was best to, to, to go this route. And then all of a sudden, you know, having, you know, people up in the higher ups like that, uh, you know, go on, on TV, on the news and say, this is good for BC, this is good for Canada, and it's good for everybody. You know, we haven't even had uh, the hearing in uh, Hartley Bay yet. And to hear that on the news, we're getting pressured, that, you know, like that. And I think that's dirty tactics. We think, uh, you know, the right thing's going to happen and that's, it's not going to go through. You know, there's no way that we can allow uh, super tankers on this coastline. You know, it's, it's, and if it did, it would be just a matter of uh, not if, it's just when. When does that first tanker have its accidents? And we're not about to uh, risk everything, our culture, our way of life, you know, for, for a tanker. And there's other options here. Why, why do we need to export it? You know, I was talking to a guy this morning, he said some places have where they actually refine the oil to gas. They're paying 15 cents, 8 cents a liter. And we're paying over a dollar a liter here. And, and, you know, we're basically shipping oil out and bringing it back in as gas. It's crazy. We live off of everything here. So there's no way where we can, we, we want to let the, a threat come to that. You know, our wealth is, is shown by how much we have in our freezer, how much is in our backyard, and it's just one of those things that uh, we don't want to take a chance on. It's not worth, worth the risk. You know, we've got abundant whales in our territory, and those are the things that we're, we're asking questions about. How are these uh, cetaceans going to be able to uh, use the territory still with uh, 225 additional tankers you know, going up uh, the Douglas Channel. We live in Hartley Bay. We see the weather. And uh, some of the reports we've seen, you know, the restrictions on weather, what would keep uh, a super tanker offshore. And uh, some of the stories that I'm hearing now that they can't just shut this pipeline down if boats don't make it in. You know, the stuff starts to harden up. So, you know, we don't know how, the, and, th and that would really uh, bring It'll, it'll force the boats to come into the rougher conditions and, you know, really the unknown. There's how many more than 90 degree turns that these vessels have to take. You know, at the top of Gill Island where the ferry hit, that's one. It's greater than 90 degrees they're going to have to turn. And uh, some of the reports that we had, these vessels will have to maintain 12 knots on the inside waters. And one of the questions I asked was, okay, if, you're, you're, if you have to maintain 12 knots, how are you going to do it when you have to slow down to do these turns? And uh, the more than 90 degree turns. And they said, actually, on all of the turns, we're actually going to speed up to 19 knots. And I said, in a situation where it's already tough to do, you're actually going to increase the chances of an accident happening by speeding up? I said, Mariner's Law, when, when, when you're, you're in an accident situation, you, you reduce speed. You know, when your visibility comes down, reduce speed. And these guys have to maintain 12 knots. Before we come up to this rally, what I seen on the news, you know, and it was from Enbridge, you know, they, they talked about uh, how, how, how they're going to be better. And what they said was, we're going to have the best response teams, you know, for if an accident happens. And that to me, you know, is, is we've dealt with the Queen of the North and that's a, this, this is a light oil compared to uh, uh, the uh, crude oil that they're going to be carrying, you know, and, and we couldn't even deal with that. Ten days the cleanup crew was there and they only recovered a five gallon bucket of diesel. Well, the next steps is uh, preparing for the, uh, on March 3rd in uh, Hartley Bay for the panel to come there and uh, we've got to get our people prepared for that. It's really sad uh, when uh, you've got young kids in your family, like I've got a 13 year old daughter and for her I could remember when I was 13 years old 
and I never had to think about politics, you know, about the environment. You know, I was just playing out, going fishing every day after school and, you know, but for me to come home from work at five o'clock and see my daughter sitting on the chair crying, you know, and that's what it was. It was, it was really sad to see a 13 year old worried about, uh, you know, our seaweed harvesting camps and all that. So, you know, for a 13 year old to have to think about stuff like this, their future, and, you know, I never had to have any of those choices. All I did was I just went fishing at the bridge and, you know, played around hide and go seek. And then, you know, these young kids are b being put through so much now. It, it's really crazy that they're, they're being forced. And, you know, the sad thing about it, I'm going to have to prepare her. You know, she's going to have to be one of the ones to stand up and, you know, plead. To, to save our environment. And it's crazy that, that this has to happen. It was Sunday and we're at a council meeting again today about the same very issue. And yet we've got zero funds to deal with this kind of stuff. But it always takes precedent at every meeting. If we have a four day meeting schedule, two to three of those days is just to deal with uh, the upcomings of uh, Enrich, the twin pipeline. So, you know, for us to have to deal with that uh, on a regular basis, it just takes, a toll, takes its toll. And I think that's part of their game plan, you know, is l let's see how long they could, who's got the stamina here? And th that's the way it seems, who, who's gonna have the last leg? And uh, I, I really got inspired yesterday with the turnout of people that showed up and all the presentations that were done, you know, and it, it really didn't feel like you're doing it, all of this for nothing. You know, it was really nice to see all the other nations come out and support. So, you know, I think we're going to win this one.